Imagine being able to easily change any detail in a photo, swap one object in a character's hands for another, turn a summer vibe into a winter chill, age or rejuvenate a character, or completely redraw a scene, changing the location and clothing while keeping the character's appearance intact. All of this is possible with Flux One Context, a revolutionary model from Black Forest Labs that makes image editing easier, faster, and cooler than ever before. Hey everyone, in this tutorial, we'll explore three workflows that let you do all these things. This is the basic workflow using the Flux Context model, plus two enhanced ones. The first allows precise editing of specific areas, and the second lets you draw a rough sketch and incorporate two reference images. In this video, I'll break down their nuances in detail. And if you'd like, you can download these workflows from my Patreon page, link in the description. Let's get started. The Flux Context model comes in several versions. There's an optimized version for less powerful hardware, a standard one, Max, and Pro. The last two are only available on paid platforms. Naturally, they offer the highest generation quality. I'll be using the lightweight version. Download links are in the description. So here's the basic workflow. If opening it in your comfy UI environment shows anything highlighted in red, install the missing nodes in the manager and update Comfy UI to the latest version. Then fully restart Comfy UI. The Markdown Note node includes links to the models and instructions on where to place them. Clicking the model name opens its download page. Clicking an empty space shows the markdown syntax. For example, a link is formatted like this. The text goes in square brackets and the URL goes in parentheses. From here, it's business as usual. The diffusion model loader, the text encoder loader, the VAE model loader. This is where we load the image. I'll also share the workflow for creating this image. This node also includes links to all the models and where to place them. I wanted the character to have a Tim Burton style, so I used a suitable Laura from Civit AI. One more thing. Recently, one of my subscribers, a bit confused about models, asked me to create a turnkey workflow, something that makes it crystal clear where models should go and where to download them. They weren't the only ones struggling with model placement, so I decided to embed this info directly into the workflow. Now, if a model is missing, you'll get a message with a download link. Let me show you how. This is optional info, but it might come in handy if you want to do the same. Right-click the node to open its properties. Here's the line. This is where you enter the model name, download link, and folder location. When you make changes here, save the workflow and drag it back into Comfy UI. Refreshing the page won't save the changes. But editing here isn't very convenient. Let me show you another way. Open the workflow file in JSON format in Notepad++. It looks unreadable as a single line. We need to format it. Select all, copy. Now search for any online JSON formatter. For example, the first one on the list. Paste the code, and it appears in a readable format on the right. Copy it, delete the old code. Paste the formatted code. Right-click the panel's properties. Copy the node's name. Find the line containing that text. Here it says properties. And here's the model name, download link, and folder. Save the file after making changes. Check it by dragging the file back in. Now, if a model is missing, you'll see a message with a download link. If you get a missing model message, but don't need it, just close it. You can choose, don't remind me again. It won't interfere. Then select your model. I created all four workflow files this way. So hopefully, downloading and placing models will be hassle-free now. All right, enough of the detour. Back to Flux Context. Prompts need to be super specific, with no vagueness or ambiguity. For example, Replace the lamp in the guy's hand with a sword. As you can see, it handled the task perfectly, leaving the rest of the image unchanged. But that's a simple task. Let's make it more complex. I write, transform the forest into a beautiful Victorian living room with candles. Replace the lamp with a book. Keep the guy's figure, clothing, and facial features unchanged. Let's see the result. The image changed as requested. The guy's holding the book with both hands, but I didn't specify otherwise. I tweak the prompt. Add heavy snowfall and a winter vibe while keeping the original composition. Let's try aging the character. I write, turn the character into an old man, 
add gray hair and a cane, keeping facial features intact. There you go, the guy's aged naturally. I also added a Laura here to make the character more cartoonish. Now, I'll request a close-up of the face with high detail, focusing on the eyes. You can see how the face's detail has changed. Here's the slightly blurry original, and here's the redrawn image. Not only is the face sharper, but you can even see the texture of the jacket lapels and vest. So, prompts need to be crystal clear and specific. Use words like transform, replace this object with that, keep this unchanged. Instead of make it pretty, write exactly transform into a magical forest, keeping the trees and bushes in place. Next, it's standard stuff. The original image size is passed to the K sampler. Flux guidance, zeroed out negative prompt node. One important thing, for good image quality, the flux model needs at least 20 steps. Flux context completely redraws the original image, even if you're only changing one object. The quality of the altered image depends directly on the number of steps. I set 20 steps here. The original and new images are about the same quality. All details are preserved, and one object is swapped for another. Great job. If you increase the steps to, say, 35, the image regenerates with more detail and vibrancy. With all details preserved, the quality noticeably improves. So, you can generate drafts with fewer steps, like 10, for speed, then regenerate the one you like with more steps, 30 or so. I use 35 steps, but the documentation says you can go up to 50. Now let's move to the workflow for editing specific areas. It's basically the same, but instead of the load image node, there are two nodes, one for combining two images, more on that later, and a painter node for drawing on the image. Click the drawing button to enter editing mode. Load the image, agree to the size change, Select the Rectangle tool, draw, place a small red spider in the tree roots inside the white frame. Remove the white frame. Ensure the scene looks natural and realistic. Keep the trees unchanged. Here's the result. The spider is exactly where we specified. The lighting and shadows look good too. Now let's look at the workflow where you can draw a rough sketch and provide two reference images. It also includes model info and locations, so if something's missing, you know what to do. I won't go into too much detail. It's mostly the same, except for this block. In the Edit in another tab node, you can draw. Click Edit. A new tab opens. The active tab is marked by a glowing green button in the top right corner. I want a canvas with different dimensions. Click New Image. Set the dimensions. The new canvas isn't full size, so I'll zoom out a bit to see the edges. Now, start sketching objects roughly. Assign each object a different color. I'm drawing in red around the edges. This will be an alien landscape. I'll mark the flying saucer's position in blue and the space traveler in green. Click the green button to send the sketch to Comfy UI. Now you can close the editor. So we have a sketch. Two image loaders help the program understand what the objects should look like. Each image has a corresponding VAE encoder and reference latent node. Here, I call the VAE variable which I assigned here for convenience to avoid long lines. The prompt, replace the blue shape with a flying saucer from the third image. Remove the blue shape. Replace the green shape with the guy from the second image. Change his clothing to a spacesuit, keeping his facial features and hairstyle unchanged. Remove the green shape. Replace the red shape with a Martian landscape in blue-purple tones with glowing green mushrooms in Tim Burton style. Remove the red shape. Then, I describe the overall atmosphere. Here's the result. All objects are in place per the prompt and reference images. So, my thoughts. Flux Context delivers amazing results, taking image editing to a whole new level. Methods like IP adapter and inpainting, with all their complicated steps, are now a thing of the past. And keep in mind, I used the lightweight model for a less powerful GPU. Imagine what the Max and Pro models can do. So, give it a try. If this video was helpful, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.